Hey, welcome back. Today on my bench I have an eBay junk find. Uh, well, it's actually not junk. It's a Citation 23 active tracking tuner. And uh, I bought it on eBay as for parts not working. Um, the seller said it doesn't power on. Um, I just finished unwrapping it and it looks a lot nicer than the pictures described um, but yeah it's it's a heavy unit too for a tuner you'd think a tuner would be nothing but it's heavy it's oh it's got some weight to it in the back I'm missing one of the outer conductors of the RCA jack there I might have to figure out something for that uh, it came with no remote, no antenna. Um, a remote I have coming on the way is supposed to be here tomorrow. Uh, I happened to find one in the States, so I bought it. Just because uh, uh, it would be nice to have with the, with the, with the unit itself. But uh, 16 presets. The active tracking tuner portion of it is that it allows you, it's a phase lock loop. Um, it's phase locked, locked when you're tuning stations, but when you come to a station that is uh, uh, swamped out by a, an adjacent station, you're allowed to tune it away from the, from the, from the interference. And uh, yeah, okay. Anyways, let's uh, power this thing up and see, uh, it says it has no power, so let's see. Turn on my isolation transformer and hit the power button. Well, we have power. We have no display. AM, FM. Presets. I'm sure dim. As soon as I try tuning, the, the preset light goes out. So I drifted away from the preset. Okay. Wow. Let's take the top off. Okay, so took the screws out. I don't think anybody's been in here before because, you know, usually you get screws that are all chewed up from the screwdrivers, but these ones look pretty clean. So I don't think anybody's been in here. Oh yeah. So first thing is this, and this mark here. You're going to see that from uh, devices that produce heat, and the light bulb. It's like the light bulb's burned out, and somebody has been in here. Look at this has been spliced. wrapped with tape. Let's try this, turn this on. Anyways, we got a dead bulb. That's why we got no display. That's a pretty easy fix. I was expecting to do something with the power supply. Everything looks pretty good. There's optocoupler for the tuning. It's weighted. A nice tuner. Okay, so I got a panel lamp here. I don't even know what voltage it is. It's in my junk pile. 
I'm going to test it out. I got it at 7 volts now. It's barely lighting up. Turn it up to 13, 13 and a half. That's adequate. Well, that'll work, won't it? You can see the display now. The display's messed up, but it's it's bright enough to work. It's pretty dim though. There's still something wrong with this. Okay, let's get this bulb in. Hope these wires are long enough. make it okay We got a messed up LCD display. I'm wondering. You might have to reduce some soldering here. first three digits seem fine, it's the last digit that's all messed up. If this thing has a bad LCD display, it might be junk. So, uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so instead of taking off the front panel, I decided to pull out the main board and uh, flip it over. I wanted to check a lot of uh, connections. I had uh, some connections here. This is a high heat area here. You can see it's it's slightly darker than the rest of the board. So I want to go through and check the ESR of all these caps here. I want to check the, uh, the solder connections on these two transistors. One's with the heat sink and then the one with the, the 78 M05, the regulator, I want to check that one as well. But I'm not seeing anything that's outward, outward, outwardly wrong with this board. Like the soldering, it, uh, it's not bad. But we'll just go through and clean up some of this before I put it back together. And then we'll take the front panel off. Out of all the connections, I think there was maybe one that was questionable. It would be that one right here. Not anymore. But we didn't have a power supply issue. It seems like everything's working. that's good for this. I'll go back over it again later. And I'll check a few ESR and a few caps. Check the 
the big ones. What are the big ones? They're 2200 and 1000s. Okay. Two hundreds. It's good. It's good. The thousands. Not good. Not good. What is that? What are they looking at there? 47 microfarad, 50 volt. That's good. Okay, so we've got a few caps to change. No big deal. Here's another one behind the regulator. Three or four caps so far. Another bad one. What is this? Yeah, there's some bad ones. So I'll get go in here and change a few of these caps. The ones that are uh, roasted. And just for the hell of it, I think I'll check some of these other ones too. I don't think I'll find any bad ones out this way. It's mostly contained in this area where all the heat is. So maybe I'll do that first before I pull off the front. Okay, so I went through the ESR meter and I found uh, 10, 10 capacitors, nine or ten that I changed out that didn't meet my spec. A lot of them are starting to get borderline, but uh, again, it's these. Uh, TK capacitors. I talked about these in another uh, video I made, uh, another HK I was working on. It, it was loaded with these TKs and uh, they were all garbage. So I'm not uh, overly impressed with the quality of the caps they're using in this thing, considering it's a citation series. Um, one thing I wanted to look here, date codes. All these chips are reading 1987 date code. So it's a fairly old unit, 1987, where we got here, first half, 16th week, 14th week, 16th week, yeah so this thing was made middle of 1987 and uh, yeah, it's got a lot of years on it, so it's not surprising the caps are starting to go, but I replaced a few that, uh, that were below par. And we have our LCD display. And I can see right now what the problem is, without getting too close. We've got cracked joints on pretty much all they're all cracked. Every one of these seems to be cracked. The ones that uh, attach to the LCD to the printed circuit board. So I'm going to take, let's see here, this should come out of the unit. This should come out as a unit. There's damage on the LCD. Uh, that's not good. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like uh, 
maybe it delaminated. It looks like it's been de delaminated, but uh, well, that's not going to stop me from resoldering these. And I'll check these three caps. Oh boy, eBay junk. Okay, I'll solder these up, and then we'll get it back together and see what, what, how bad it. Okay, so I just quickly put it all back together just to test it. Uh, Resoldered all those connections. Replaced one cap. Hell, I still have things to plug in. Hang on. Connectors are a pain. Okay. okay, that should be it. Try this out. It's even worse now. How can we soldering a board? Oh boy. AM. Oh yeah, that's AM. Missing the first digit now. Unbelievable. Okay, so I figured out what was going wrong with this LCD display. I had the um, the first digit missing when I was tuning here. Go back to AM. So now we have it back. I resoldered all these connections, but on this one, this, see this LCD split in two. There's a, a line here, and this half is driven by these chips, and this half is driven by this chip. Uh, now, the first digit for the the LCD is this first connection here, and I got out my magnifying glass and took a good look at it, and uh, I hope you can see this. Oh yeah. I had a good look at it and there's a hairline crack in the trace. Uh, it was almost like the trace was push, pushed off the board. I don't understand why because this board hasn't seen any stress. But they were all cracked uh, along here and I resoldered them and then uh, that brought out that bad connection on this first pin. So uh, what I did is I just scraped the solder mask off and uh, just extended that blob of solder to encompass that, that trace and now they're connected again but uh, we do have tuning all the way up to 17 1710 kilohertz but these last two digits are messed up the only way to fix that it would be get a new LCD display and uh, good luck on trying to find that So, uh, oh, I had a little signal there. Signal meter's working. Couldn't pick up a station. I think the thing to do now is put it together um, and hook it up to an amp 
and uh, see what's going on with uh, all the controls and its performance. So let's do that next. Okay, so I've gone about as far as I can with this display. It's disappointing that the uh, display is damaged, but you know, it does, it's no surprise really because this thing is uh, put together in 1987, so that makes it I don't know, 35 years old now. And if you uh, are aware of how LCD displays are constructed, you got like a sheet of glass and then you have your liquid crystal on that and then uh, you have like layers of plastic that are uh, adhered to the glass with adhesive and uh, you know 35 years and those adhesives they dry out especially here because you got a lot of heat with that incandescent lamp in behind the, the, the LCD and it's probably creating a lot of heat behind there and it helped dry out the uh, display and uh, once, they, once they're gone there's really nothing you can do with them alright so I got this fed into my bench amp I got both left and right speakers hooked up antenna <laughs> Popcorn and uh, pop, all included, so be listening for that, 7.45. And I'm asking how you live dangerously from day to day. I got this text at 666666. Speaking of moving... ...where I can. If the pop machine is out from behind the counter, I will sneakily... Really don't have a good antenna on this, and it's just not picking up. <sighs> a nice signal. Fly is a thing of beauty for travelers. Coming home, old and snow to find your car. With Park and Fly's curbside, the car door service. We'll pick you up at the terminal curbside and drop you off at your car. The Octave Tunie's working. He's like in, uh, adjust. With Park and Fly, we'll have you back at your car, listening to your favorite station. Like this one. I can adjust off the center Park frequency. Park car door to curbside service. That's working. With Park and Fly, dot CA for details. Park, happy. Credits. Mute I'm is working. AM. Oh, we don't have an antenna hooked up. Let's see if we can get something here. No antenna. It just sounds terrible. Yeah, that could be my amplifier too. I haven't turned Pop it on in 10 years. It's your source for the latest odds from leading authorities, expert editorial content, and detailed matchup picks. Looking for statistics and trends from an upcoming game? Oddshark.net has that too, and it's free. Expert in depth analysis. Could be, stats, uh, could be the amplifier. Numbers and trends to help you make the sharp game day picks. Whether you want to get in on the football action, hockey, hoops, or anything in between, head over to oddshark.net and start playing like a shark okay. today. Now, the LCD is a problem. I don't think I'm going to be able to find another one. The um, the only other Harman Kardon tuner that uses active tracking tuner is, uh, I believe it's a TU920. 
and uh, it does not have the same display. It has a uh, vacuum fluorescent display. So I think this is the only tuner that uses this display and if it's ruined there's not much you can do with it. Um, I can go through and do the alignments and uh, make it a, a fantastic tuner. It's just that the display will be buggered up. You can see the last two digits. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Also, I'm thinking I'm going to take this light bulb out and put in an LED because this is very dim. Okay, so I put an LED in and you can see it's a lot brighter now. And uh, the tuner seems to be working good. The uh, active tracking is working. Still have to get AM going. I think I just need to make a loop antenna and attach it to the back, and that should be all it needs. Other than that, it's a nice unit. The problem with the LED is it's a concentrated light and it's got a narrow beam, so the center portion of this display is lit up very well but then as it you get off to the side you kind of lose intensity that's the only reason I was kind of hesitant to put the LED in there in the first place but it uh, seems to be working okay okay so I'm running into another trouble here uh, I'm trying to deal with the RCA connector on the back panel is missing the outer conductor there. So what I've done is I removed it from the board and I'm trying to find a suitable replacement. I have this one from an Onkyo receiver and um, you know physically it'll fit uh, but electrically it won't. So I don't know how I'm going to fit this on the board. I might have to cut these pins off and just hardwire it to the board. I'm, I'm really not interested in doing that because it looks pretty bush league. But I have also another one here from an Akai receiver. This is an Akai tape deck I believe. And I think physically you know, physically it won't work. It's a little bit off. Whereas this one physically matches. So this one might be out. Yeah that one's out. So I might have no choice other than to chop those pins off, hardwire it to the board. The screw will hold it to the back panel no problem and it will be fixed, but uh, it'll just look like crap. And uh, that's what I'm trying to avoid here. I'm going to dig through all my scrap inventory here. I know I threw a whole bunch of this stuff away uh, probably about a year ago. I was just getting tired of hanging on to stuff for decades. and. I just tossed it all and I probably had something in here that would have worked but uh, I'll have to see what we can do with that. I'll keep looking around my room here. Okay I'm just going to show you what I decided to do here. I decided to go with the uh, RCA connector from the Onkyo because I went through my boards and every connector I pulled up had the same uh, pin pattern on the bottom as the Onkyo and none of them had the pin pattern that I was looking for on the HK. This is a unique uh, pin pattern. This one seemed to be some kind of industry standard because a lot of different manufacturers used it but this pin pattern must have been an early design and uh, yeah I don't know it didn't hold up because uh, the uh, outer conductor came off so even this one's a little loose. But anyways, we'll get it pushed in there. So what I'm doing is I have just some urban cable. I found this wire was good because it's uh, it's stranded construction, but it's it's uh, pre-doped with solder, so it's uh, 
it's like it's already pre-tinned for me. So what I'm doing is I just take a chunk of this do this on camera without it's pretty awkward. Come on. Let's try it this way. This might be painful for you guys to watch. But this is what we have to do sometimes get this old equipment working again. Okay, so I'll solder that. Actually, what I want to do first... I want to just fold this over. Okay, now the reason I fold it over is because I want this bottom to be flush. I don't want anything protruding out. And uh, what I'm going to do is once I get these four on, I'll solder a couple back here for the grounds. And then uh, I'll have my six wires that'll fit into the board. And I'll uh, lay down some hot glue. I know it's hot, uh, hot's not. It's not the best choice, but that's all I have right now. I'll hot glue this to the PCB. The wires will go through the wall, the, the holes, and then from underneath I'll solder it all up. And uh, if it looks like any of these conductors will cross, I'll put a little sleeve of heat shrink tubing on it just to insulate. But uh, we'll see how it looks when it's done. Okay, so what I got here is I took the old one out and we have to pay attention to right and left channel. The left channel is the top ones, right channel's bottom. So if I go to the back, left channel is on this side. So I mark the board left, mark the board right, left, right. And then where's my new one? Oh, right here. If I look in the new one, the left channel is opposite, so I have to get these wires underneath to cross each other, and then I'll have to uh, get them insulated. I'll have to put a little bit of insulation on the, the wire, the wire here, just so that they don't short out because they're going to be crossed. And then the grounds I can deal with after because the grounds are come out the back, and there's two holes in the back for grounds. Um, because the center center conductor here is your ground. Now I got a resistor that's in the way. That's going to keep this from sitting flat on the board. So I'm going to have to take that resistor out, move it to the underside. And then uh, what I can do is I checked this connector sits flush with the board with this shoulder. So that's how I'll line it up before I glue it down. I'll, I'll line it up and I'll sh with this shoulder here, I'll line it with the edge of the board, glue it down with the, the left rights in the holes. And then once the glue sets, I can flip it over and, uh, you know, solder all the grounds and, uh, and uh, whatnot. I didn't check the height. The height should be the same from the bottom. No, the height is a little different. We have maybe a millimeter. What does that look like? A millimeter and a half. This one's lower. So what that's going to do is it's going to pull the board up a little bit. But then I have these two pots here that are uh, also tied in with the back panel. So uh, the board might have to flex a little bit just to accommodate that difference. Otherwise, it's a perfect fit. 
And of course it's not gold plated, but we can't have everything. Okay, I've gone pretty much as far as I can with this tuner. Um, I've got the output jacks replaced. I've got a handful of caps, about 10 caps I replaced. I uh, replaced the uh, incandescent bulb with an LED. And now I dropped the current down to 25 milliamps. It's still bright enough that it works great. Uh, overall, it's a nice tuner. It does have some flaws though. One of them is, uh, for example, this here. When you tune it, see how it bounces back when you let go of the knob? I don't know why it, it's doing that. It's just a shaft with a weight on it. Maybe that weight is not balanced properly. But it distracts from the, you're trying to tune in the station and it just wants to do its own thing which is a big fail for me um, I gave it a little bit of a touch up on the alignment, there's really nothing that was out of a line for this thing um, the remote did come yesterday so I'm going to check this out get into it. <laughs> there is a remote in there, huh? there is. Station 23. It's fairly good shape. Double A's. I don't think I have any double A's here. Okay. Funny thing is, you go in the service manual, there's no mention of a remote, there's no diagrams, there's no schematics, there's no nothing. Yeah. That mute. Turning. It's seeking. Un exercice exact. Et de voir. Very nice. Is a nice tuner. This is a remote. I don't know how useful that remote is for a tuner, but. It's a nice, nice unit. It's going to be a nice addition to my collection. All right, thanks for watching.